Now we're going to look at the equilibrium constant. Up until now, we've spoken about equilibrium in what would, know, what would be called a qualitative manner. So it's all been descriptions, there's been no calculations, and that's great if we're just trying to describe what's happening, but actually we need to also speak about it in terms of qualitative. So that means we've got to put some calculations to it because in the long run, calculations help us when we want to make predictions. So... The equilibrium constant is an equilibrium expression and it simply gives us a ratio of the concentration to products of the products to reactants at equilibrium. So as an expression, we can give it in symbols as being the, the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. That symbol there, that's Kc, that's the symbol for the, for the term equilibrium constant. This, as I've written it here, is a memory guide. You may not use it as an equation. It's simply for you to remember that it has to be the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants at equilibrium. This means for us that we can actually analyze what the value means. So if my equilibrium expression is bigger than 1, it means that we have a big number at top, a little number at the bottom, and it means that we have more products at equilibrium than we have reactants. Okay? If the equilibrium constant is less than 1, then we have the bigger value at the bottom, so we have less products than reactants present at equilibrium. Okay, please note the equilibrium constant can never be 1, and it can never be negative. Okay, it's never going to be 1. If you get 1, well, you've made a mistake. Okay, so number 1, we can only do these calculations when the equilibrium when we have a balanced chemical equation. Number two, if we have solids and liquids, their values remain constant, so we give them a value of one because we can't change their concentrations, so we don't put them into our Kc expressions because they're going to make no difference. Kc is temperature dependent. In other words, if the temperature changes, the value of the Kc also changes. When you look at your graphs, if you change pressure or concentration to a Kc system, to an equilibrium system, when the new equilibrium is established, you will keep the same Kc value as you had originally, unless you've changed the temperature. In general, this is how we get it. So here we have products become go to the top. The difference here is now the balancing numbers, the coefficients, that's what the little numbers are, those coefficients become exponents, okay, so if it's a 2 or a 3, it becomes squared or cubed, but C, D, A, B, capitals, those are the actual substances like H2O or chlorine or whatever the case may be, okay, very important, concentration must be in moles per decimeter cubed, and the exponents are the coefficients in the balanced equations, okay, so let's do some examples, Write down the expressions for the equilibrium constant for the following reaction. CO2, H2, H2O, CO. Well, those two go on the top. The nice thing is all the balancing numbers are 1. So it becomes square bracket, please. Must be, must be, must be, must be square bracket. Very, very, very important. Square bracket means concentration. So we have the H2O concentration times the carbon monoxide concentration divided by the CO2 concentration times the H2 concentration. Right, nice and straightforward. Now we look at the next one, and what we would do here is we'd go, well, we'd have CO squared, and we would normally put the C, and then we would put the CO here. The problem is that's a solid, so that's a 1. We don't need to include it. So the case C is CO2, CO squared over CO2. Oh, there should be a 2 there. Nice and simple. What I now need you to do before you move, before you carry on with this video, you can always watch it again. So you need to do activity one on page 241. Make sure you can write the KC expressions. That's the first step in doing chemical equilibrium calculations. Okay, so you must make sure you can write those expressions. Right, next. Now we need to look at the calculations. So we've got the expression, now we do the calculation. We can only calculate, put a value to the equilibrium constant, if we know the concentrations at equilibrium. Has to be at equilibrium. It's an equilibrium constant. So, let's start with the easy examples. 
Consider the following equilibrium reaction at 325. They tell us the temperature in case they change it along the way. And they tell you of after reaching equilibrium, the reaction was analyzed. Don't worry how they did that. The N2 is 2,34. The H2 is 1,43. The NH3 is 3,76 moles per decimeter cubed. So they've given us the values of the equilibrium at equilibrium, okay, the concentrations. What we have to do is set up the equilibrium expression, okay? That's what the whole last exercise was about. Products over reactants. So step one, give me the, react, the, the proper expression. So NH3 squared over N2 times H2 cubed. We were given all the values, so we can just dump them into the equation as given. Please make sure you can use your calculator. That's very, very important. And there we go, 2,07. No unit, it's a ratio, okay? No units, very, 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 very important. All right, now, what I wanna do is we're going to go back quickly. Okay, give me a second. We need to go back to the graph. And I know you can see this. There we go. So we're going back to the graph. And over here. All right, so we're going back to the graph. This is just another way I can ask you this. This was the graph from the last question we did. They want the KC expression at 15 seconds, which is over there. They give us all the values. The hardest part giving us the KC expression. That's actually the same one we just used. So we have NH3 squared over N2 squared times H3 cubed. Dump in what we know from the values and we get 22,4. No equation, no ratio, no units because it is a ratio. All right. Then we need to calculate KC at 35 seconds. Well, once again, that should be third. There's the 35 seconds. We put everything in and we get 22,5. I said to you that the KC value was temperature dependent. Here, there's a slight difference, but that difference is probably because of that value because it went to three decimal places, whereas everything else was just two. Okay, it's close enough. And why do I know that that's fine? Because the temperature didn't change. When we did this equation, we recognized that it was the N2 that was increased it wasn't a change in temperature it was a change in concentration so that's fine so that these are the two easy ways we can do it we can give it to you from a graph where it's nice and simple and you read things off a graph or i can give it to you like the last question we did where i give you the values inside the equation but why would we be so nice so now we've got to get to the fun part with using what we call rice tables. First, you've got to make note of the following. When the reaction starts, you always have lots of reactants and you have zero product because you have to make the product. Once equilibrium is reached, the product is the amount, the amount of product that we have left is what's been formed. The concentration of the reactants is what's left over. Okay. So that's very, very important. Now, let's look at our three worked examples. Okay, and we're going to go through this step by step. So here we have two moles of NO2 placed in a one decimeter cubed container. The following equilibrium is reached. So it's 2NO2 goes to N2O4. At equilibrium, we found a mole, 0.4 moles of NO2. Now they want the value of the equilibrium constant. I don't know what the equilibrium values were. We have to work that out. That's the pur purpose of what we're going to do now. So this table always has the same number of rows. The number of columns here depends on the equation. So there's a column for every substance in the equation. I put this double line in because it tells me where the double arrow is, so it separates my reactants from the products. First thing we're going to put in is we're going to put in the NO2 and the N2O4, because that's what we were given. Then we're going to write in the mole ratio. Now, the mole ratio comes from the balanced equation. I think I need to get rid of all my... There we go. 
maybe I should just make this, there we go, now you can see it all. Okay, comes from the balanced equation, the two and, so the two and the one. Then I put in what I know, I know that I have two moles of NO2 at the beginning, and I always start with zero. Now, the next one is we've got to remember that we're going to take away from our product, from our reactant. So to put a little minus on there, and we're going to add to the products. I can't put anything into the change line yet. In the question, they told me that at equilibrium, I had 0.4 moles of NO2. Haven't lost any of you yet. Now we've got to go backwards. Okay. So start, we work through with what we know. I had two moles of NO2. I finished with 0, 0,4, which means I made 1,6 moles. Okay, well, ch we're changed by 1,6 moles. Now I've got to find out what's here. Now this is what you need to remember. The ratio line and the change line must be multiples of the same ratio. Okay, so the ratio line is 2 to 1, so the change line must be 2 to 1. So I'm going to take what I've got, okay, the 1 comma 6, times by what I want, divide by what I've got, and put the answer over there. So I'm multiplying by 1 over got. You know this from stoichiometry. So 1 over got, 1 comma 6 times 1, divide by 2, gives me 0 comma 8. I didn't have, use the mole ratios, that stands for once over got, I didn't have any product, I made 0, 0,8, so I end up with 0, 0,8. However, we need moles per decimeter cubed, so we've got to remember that concentration is number of moles divided by volume. The nice thing with this question is my volume is 1, so if I go 0, 0,4 divided by 1, I'm going to get 0, 0,4. 0, 0,8 divided by 1 gives me 0, 0,8. Straightforward. I have, at last, got to the chemical equilibrium concentration values. So, my Kc value, let's get rid of what's over here. So, my Kc value is N204 over NO2 squared. Put in what I know. Okay. Put it in the calculator and we get five. Lots of product at the end. Very straightforward. Okay, let's do the next one. Three moles of N2, eight moles of H2 are in a one decimeter cubed container. It's the harbor process. At equilibrium, we have four moles of NH3. So we set up our table. That doesn't change. Okay. Rice table, because of the first letters. You cannot just write the first letters, okay? You must write them all properly. We have N2, H2, and NH3. The ratio is 1 to 3 to 2 from the balanced equation. We fill in what we know. I know that I have 3 moles of N2. I have 8 moles of H2. I have 0 moles of NH3. At equilibrium, I have 4 moles of NH3. So now I start here and work backwards. I didn't have any to start off with. I ended up with 4, so I changed by 4. Now we multiply by the mole ratio. So we're going to go times by 1, divide by 2, gives me 2. Okay. Let's get rid of that part so you can see it. Then I'm going to times by 3, divide by 2, put it over there. Okay, that, whoops, going to give us 6. This line and that line is the same ratio. 1 to 3 to 2, 2 to 6 to 4, same thing. Okay, I had 3, I minus 2, I get 1. I had 8, I minus 6, I have 2. Like before, I want the concentration. Concentration is number of moles over volume. Number of moles divided by the volume. In this case, it's also a 1. So 1 divided by 1 gives me 1. 2 divided by 2 gives me, divided by 1, sorry, is 2. 4 divided by 1 is 4. We have our equilibrium concentrations. We then put it into our equation, and we're all sorted. Okay, and this is quite a nice one, because hopefully some of you could do this in your heads. Okay, 
but do not take it that because for the last two examples that we have done that the concentration's always going to be one dot decimeter cubed. In fact, it's not going to be. Let's do the next one. One mole each of SO2 and O2 are placed in a 500 centimeter cubed container. They give us the following balanced equilibrium. At equilibrium, we have 0, 0,6 moles. Calculate the KC cal equilibrium. Great, we know where we're going. We have our equation, ratio, change, ratio, initial change, equilibrium, equilibrium. We have SO2, O2, SO3. We put in the ratio, which is 2 to 1 to 2. The initial number of moles is 1 and 1 and 0. And at equilibrium, I have 0, 0,6 moles of O2. So now I'm going to work backwards. I had 1. I end up with 0 0.6, which means I made 0 0.4. I'm going to times by 2, divide by 1, gives me 0, 0,8. Times, times by 2, divide by 1, 0, 0,8. I had 1, I use 0, 0,8, so I end up with 0, 0,2. I had 0, I make 0, 0,8, I end up with 0, 0,8. I need the concentration. So I have to remember that volume is 500 centimeters cubed which is 0 0.5 decimeters cubed because I divided by a thousand. All right. Concentration, 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.5 gives me 0 0.4. I can do the calculation in here. They're actually quite happy if you go 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.5 and you put the equation in there. I've just done it outside of it so you can see what we're doing. Then we've got 0, 0,6 divided by 0, 0,5, which is going to give me 1, 2. It's the next one. 0, 0,8 divided by 0, 0,5, which means we're going to have 1, 6. We're all happy, it should, so you can see it better. Okay. We now need to do the KC expression. SO3 squared over SO2 squared times by O2. 1 comma 6 squared divided by 0 comma 4 squared times 1 comma 2. Please use your calculators and for the first time you're now getting a decimal. That's perfectly acceptable. Okay, these do not have to be whole numbers, not by a long shot. Okay, so you now need to do activity 1 on page 245. Please, you really do need to do these. They're quite important. And also do the ones in the electricity worksheet that is in Teams.